Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we're going to wrap up lab number six by working through exercise three to implement the preference. And it'll be pretty straightforward once we get to the code part. It's going to be very similar to code that we've used already to retrieve the roaming settings. Uh, we're just going to wrap a little more around it. But let's kind of address the elephant in the room. You might be wondering, hey, didn't we already implement this or wasn't this already working? I mean, won't the app already return to the last page that we navigated to? Uh, isn't that what the suspension manager uh, does for us? Uh, yes, sort of. Um, there's an important distinction to make. Currently, if the user switches out to another app, so they're working in our app and then they switch to another app, as we remember from our lesson on the life cycle of an app, Windows 8 will put our app into suspension. And so that's when the suspension manager kicks in. It, it, it takes the, uh, the current state of the application and saves it off so that if the user then switches back to our app, then it can be restored completely. The full uh, navigation can be restored and so on. Um, and so let's just see that demonstrated and then I'm going to make a quick distinction. Let's change to the simulator again and now we're going to run our app in the simulator as it is right now. And so for example if we were to go to um, the first recipe but then navigate over two or three recipes till we get to this Asian pear and shredded carrot salad then if we were to switch to another app, say the weather app. And then at some point we switch back to our app. We see we're brought back to the page we were last left off from and that's where the suspension manager kicks in. But here's another scenario. What if we were, the user were to terminate the app and kind of bypass the suspension manager and to do that I'm going to switch over here and just use this swiping motion from top all the way to the bottom which will automatically terminate the app and notice when we do that what happens in Visual Studio after two or three seconds it detaches from the debugger alright so our app is completely removed from memory now so the next time we run the app it will begin back on the start page. All right, so that is the scenario that we'll be addressing with this change that we make, okay? The difference between letting Windows 8 put our app into suspension and then terminate it versus the user going straight to termination. All right, so let's go ahead and follow through the, um, the instructions in this exercise. And they're pretty simple, and it says because we have some of the infrastructure already in place, using the suspension manager to take the current state and save it off temporarily, uh, we can borrow some of that. So let's just follow the instructions. Uh, we're going to open up the app.xaml and add a, a new using statement here. So let's go to app.xaml, add a new using statement. And then it tells us to, on the onLaunch method, we're going to add this immediately after the await load local data async. Okay, we know where that's at. So here's on launched. And then our load local data async. So we're going to paste our code right there. Okay. And so now if we look at the code, we've already seen how to retrieve data previously, but now we're going to wrap a little more structure around it where we're going to actually check to make sure that the roaming settings value key, remember, exists before we actually try to uh, retrieve it. And then if that value is set to true, we'll already call the restore async which has already been implemented for us because of, uh, of our use of the grid app template. So if we go to definition here, we've already seen this, you know, uh, used already. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on here. And it walks us through this scenario where um, we want to turn on the remember where I was setting. Uh, then we're going to uh, go to a recipe and then close the app by swiping down like that second scenario I showed you. Uh, allow Visual Studio to uh, for its process to end and then start up the app again and hopefully uh, it will come back to the page that we 
<laughs> where we were before we close the app and then we're going to turn the toggle off and try it again and see that we should come back to the start page okay so let's try this uh, let's go ahead and run the app all right so let's go ahead and um, navigate into uh, let's go to this Shanghai noodle and meatball soup and here I'm going to get to the settings and I'm going to make sure that our preferences are on okay and if they are then I'm going to or if they're not make sure they are and then I'm gonna swipe all the way down whoops I need the the touch I'm gonna to swipe all the way down switch back to Visual Studio make sure that it ends on its own and it does and now when we restart we should come back to that same soup great now to make sure that the setting is working, let's go ahead and hover over and get back to settings and go to preferences. And now let's turn that off. And now let's navigate to a new page. Let's go to the fried rice menu page. And then I'm going to take that same swipe motion, switch back to Visual Studio, All right, now let's run the app again and it should just go to the start page and it does awesome okay so it worked and I think that's all we need to do yep okay so we're making great progress our app feels more and more like a real Windows Store app in the next lesson we're gonna learn how to liven up our start uh, our app start page tiles with notifications that's exciting we'll see you there thank you mm -hmm.